The NBA Finals, they're finally here. And for a basketball fan, this is the best time of the year. This is where NBA players cement their legacies. So let's look back at one of the most iconic performances in a Finals game. Allen Iverson's Game 1 against the Lakers in the 2001 Finals, also known as the Step Over Game. Before we start talking about AI's iconic step over game, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any new videos. So let's set the scene a little bit. Let's go back around a year, the 2000 off season. Allen Iverson and head coach Larry Brown, they just hated each other. I think Larry Brown was more of like a traditional coach. And of course, AI, we know him, like he's the superstar guy, doesn't necessarily buy into things as the whole practice quote. Doesn't pass. Yeah, doesn't pass. He's flashy. They just did not like each other. And it looked like Iverson was going to be traded. And a deal was, it was done. It was a four team deal. Iverson was about to be sent to the Pistons, but Matt Greiger said, no, I ain't waving my trade kicker. He said, f living in Detroit. Yeah, I ain't going to Detroit. The city of Detroit has officially given up. You know, between the Pistons missing out on Iverson and then not drafting Melo a couple years later, like for how well they were run in the early 2000s, they had some big misses. They did, but they got their title. The 76ers didn't. So I think Pistons fans were happy about it. And hey, Iverson ended up playing for the Pistons in 2008, 2009. He wasn't great then though. <laughs> no, he was way past his prime, but he did end up in Detroit. Kind of funny. Iverson stayed and then it was like, is Larry Brown? Brown gonna dip. He thought about going to North Carolina as alma mater to take the head coaching job there, but both ended up staying and somehow it worked out. They started the season 10 and 0. They were on fire and everything was basically going right for them. The one thing I do remember about this season is this is the season where the shooting sleeve trend started because yep. Iverson had something wrong in his elbow and he wore a shooting sleeve to like help combat that. And even after his elbow had healed, he just kept wearing it as like a fashion statement. And literally like every other star player in the NBA followed his lead like Kobe, LeBron, Dwight, Mello, Wade like so many stars followed him. Yeah Iverson I know some people kind of overrate him in my opinion but from a cultural impact to the NBA this guy there's not many players you could rank above him from like just the culture impact. They were insane going to the All-Star break. They had AI was an All-Star. He won All-Star Game MVP. Theo Ratliff was an All-Star as well. Larry Brown was the coach. But Theo Ratliff injured his wrist, and they traded for Dikembe Mutombo. And honestly, they weren't great after getting it. Now, they went 15 and 14, which is weird. Like, you think Mutombo is the upgrade in this scenario? Like, he's right. not he's not Nuggets Mutombo anymore, but he's still very good. I mean, only one defensive player of the year, but not a great finish to the season. And what was funny is Larry Brown, like I said, he coached the All-Star Game. So he coached Matumbo in the All-Star game. And a lot of people think like he just loved Matumbo so much. He's like, <laughs> I got to trade for this guy. This guy played so well in <laughs> yeah. the All-Star game. Exactly. That I need to trade for him. But yeah, so Matumbo wins Defensive Player of the Year. Iverson wins MVP. Six man, they win. Aaron McKee wins. Coach of the Year is Larry Brown. Like I said, Iverson won the All-Star game MVP. He was the scoring champ. Led the league in minutes per game and steals per game. I, they were just a rookie of the year away <laughs> from sweeping the awards. Yeah, it's I've never seen a team... I I think this is the most awards any team has ever won. And it's just insane. Like, who does that? How does that even happen? So now let's start talking about the 2001 playoffs. Because on one side of the bracket, you got the Lakers, the defending champions, you got Shaq and Kobe, and they just straight coasted. They were unstoppable. <laughs> they were. They went to the NBA Finals, get this, on a 19-game winning streak. That's got to be easily the biggest win streak going to the Finals. They had lost a game in the entire playoffs, and they won each game in the playoffs by an average of 15 points a game. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, it does help when you have Shaq, the best player in the league, and Kobe was probably like the fourth or fifth best player in the league. So. He might have been the second best player yeah, in the league. Yeah, he might have been, honestly. So that's kind of hard to stop. 76ers, though, they did not sweep their way to the finals. They beat the Pacers in round one, fine. They had an all-time epic second-round series against the Raptors and Vince Carter. And in this series, AI and Vince were just going back and forth, dropping 50 bombs on each other. Yeah, we might have to do a video just on this series because AI had two 50-point games, Vince had a 50-point game, but a lot 
of people remember this series because the game seven, Vince Carter went to his graduation for North Carolina, ended up not playing so good in game seven later in the day. And can you fault him for it? Yes. <laughs> yeah? I mean, yeah, you kind of can. Vince, you couldn't have <laughs> taken two like bullshit classes the next term over the summer and then graduated in like the fall you you had to graduate in the spring during the nba playoffs yeah i don't know if it caused him to play bad but he had a chance to win the series final buzzer beating shot in game seven but he missed it and that brought the 76ers to the conference finals against the bucks and weirdly enough this is a little bit of a controversial series well the nba was in between a rock and a hard place exactly. it was like you either have the bucks go into the finals to play the lakers which not a lot of people would want to see because the Bucks were, you know, that hard-nosed, defensive-minded team that was actually a team. I mean, they had good players. Glenn Robinson, Ray Allen, Sam Cassell. Really solid team, but no marketable superstars. No, they really didn't. And Iverson, he was marketable. He was the MVP. So, I mean, who knows? The NBA around this time was shady as hell. I don't know if it was rigged. I haven't really seen the games, to be honest, but I doubt it was. So the 76ers, finally, they make the finals. They end up winning seven. They blew out the Bucks in game seven, but they their team was limping to the finals. They had George Lynch got injured in the second round. Eric Snow was playing through a fractured foot from the Eastern Conference Finals. Aaron McKee will talk about broke his foot in the fourth quarter of game one, but Tombo had a broken finger, and Iverson had both a bruised tailbone and a hip injury. I didn't even know you could play through a fractured foot. I, I guess you could. I've had like a hairline <laughs> fracture in my foot and I could like barely walk on it. I couldn't put any weight on it. So to play basketball on that? Eric Snow wanted it that bad. I guess. It didn't really work out for him. I think he went 0-3 in the finals in his career. So that sucks, but you can't question his heart. No, no. Poor guy though. 0-3 <laughs> in the finals. That's tough. So now that leads us to the finals. Game one, I think the Lakers in this series were the biggest finals favorites ever. I mean, I can't think of one that would be bigger. Maybe the 2018 Warriors over the Cavs was close, but... The Cavs had LeBron. People would yeah. at least give them a chance. <laughs> but yeah, all the betting odds, this was going to be a sweep. Everyone was saying this is going to be a sweep. And they start the game up 18-5, to five, so it kind of looked like the 76 was about to get swept. And then Iverson got hot. He started out playing like ass, fun fact. Yeah. But he finished with... 30 points in the first half, scored 15 in the final five minutes of the second quarter. Now, Phil Jackson put Tyron Lue on Iverson in the second half, and it did kind of work, kind of slowed him down. He only scored 11 points in the second half, but this game didn't end at the end of the second half because Eric Snow managed to force overtime and Iverson balled out in overtime. Yeah, I feel bad for Ty Lue. I I'm, don't. <laughs> okay, I'm happy he won a title as a coach and now he kind of established himself because before then, no one knew who he was. He was literally just the guy that Iverson stepped over. And he actually, like you said, he played kind of decent defense on him. So Ty Lue, we got to put some respect on his name, at least as a coach. Well, yeah, as a coach, but as a player. Yeah, as a this, player. This is his <laughs> legacy. Sorry, Ty. It, it just, is. It just is. I'm sorry. It is what it is, though. So yeah, Iverson, he scores seven points in overtime. He hits a huge three with 120 remaining to give the 76 a two-point lead. And the next possession, everybody knows the play. It's somehow one of the most iconic plays, literally in finals history. He hits that mid-range base baseline shot on Ty Lu and then steps over him. You know what's so funny about this is someone from the Lakers bench, I think it's Horace Grant, is like <laughs> tapping Ty Lu on the back like, hey man, get up, like it's all right. It's all good. It's fine. Nope. You have just been immortalized <laughs> on t-shirts around the world, Tyron Lu. And one thing I want to mention, yeah, Iverson ate this game, 48 points, six assists, he had five rebounds, five steals, but he actually didn't shoot that great. He had 48 points, but it took him 41 shots to get there. Well, that's what happened when you take 41 layups and mid-range <laughs> yeah. shots. When you probably take like, maybe like three or four three-pointers. Yeah, this is just classic Iverson, like classic early 2000s ISO star ball where they put up insane numbers like points-wise and then you check the efficiency and you're like, was it that good? Yeah, well, they scored a lot, but they <laughs> shot a lot too. Exactly. But still, iconic performance for Iverson. They beat the Lakers for the first time in 67 days. That's two months. Yeah, that's unreal. Over two months, the Lakers, Kobe and Shaq were like, we ain't taking L's. <laughs> 
We we don't even know what an L is for two months. Through the entire NBA playoffs, they hadn't lost yet. That's unbelievable. But then, like we said, the Lakers end up winning four games in a row, winning three in Philly, and then they win the series in five. Yeah, you know, there's a funny <laughs> anecdote about this game is because Larry Brown, who was coaching the Pistons a couple years later, the NBA Finals against the Lakers, after they won game one on the road in LA, there was still a lot of talk about like, well, you know, this happened a couple years ago in 2001 when the Sixers won game one. Larry Brown actually talks about this on their championship DVD. And of course, we all know they beat the shit out of the Lakers for the rest of that series. Yeah, so exactly. Larry Brown was like, <laughs> I've seen this before. We're not doing this again. Yeah, not happening again. And really, if you think about it, this is like the brightest moment of this entire century for the 76ers franchise. Like since then, they've done basically nothing. I Have they even made a conference finals since this year? No, I think they had the longest drought in the NBA. <laughs> yeah, so. Like longer than the Kings. Yikes. That's bad. So they had this and then since then, haven't really had much. Actually, the Knicks have the longest drought. <laughs> <laughs> That's the video, guys. What do you think of Iverson's step over game? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out one of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.